metaplasia. Columnar metaplasia. The one and the only example of column metaplasia is the most famous Barrett's esophagus. And first define this any other epithelium, any other epithelium replaced by any other epithelium replaced by columnar epithelium. Any other epithelium replaced by columnar epithelium becomes columnar metaplasia. Remember, new is the change. Look, I used to remember as whatever I have done in my MBBS days is one thing. What, what am I doing now is my present scenario. New is the change. Everyone will remember you what you are doing today rather than what you have done in the past. The epithelium might be say squamous or columnar does not matter. But what is this epithelium now? It is squamous, call it squamous metaplasia. It is columnar, call it columnar metaplasia. Most simple way to remember. The example of this is Barrett's. Example is Barrett's esophagus. So to understand the Barrett's esophagus concept, let us draw the esophagus and let us see what happens. So, let us assume that this is the esophagus part okay, and this is the stomach part, this is stomach. This is esophagus and this is stomach. Now, in the esophagus, you all know there is squamous epithelium. Okay, this is squamous epithelium in the esophagus. But when the epithelium reaches the stomach, this epithelium from the look, this is squamous, let me first label it. This is squamous epithelium. So, when this reaches the stomach, it now will change to columnar epithelium like this. These all are column-like cells. Okay. So, this is the columnar epithelium, columnar epithelium. Now, why has the nature made this? The reason is the columnar epithelium can release mucin over it. Okay. There can be mucin here. And this mucin can come only from columnar, it cannot come from squamous. This mucin prevents it from acid digestion in the stomach. So, because the stomach has acid, the acid can basically, it can damage this epithelium. So, because the acid can damage the epithelium here, therefore, the body has prevented this epithelium by making the mucus lining. And from where will the mucus lining come? It will come only from columnar metaplasia, columnar epithelium. Now, what happens if this acid refluxes? If this acid refluxes back into the esophagus? If the acid comes into the esophagus, what will happen? So, what will happen is the acid will chronically irritate the lower part of esophagus. So, when the acid chronically irritates the lower part of esophagus, what happens is, this is the esophagus, this is the stomach, this esophagus which normally had this squamous epithelium, it will now have in the lower part columnar epithelium. Why? Because columnar epithelium can prevent the acid digestion. This new epithelium here, this epithelium is called as Barrett's. This is called as Barrett's esophagus. So, the epithelium which has changed from squamous to columnar is called as Barrett's. Now, what will you do to diagnose the whole con condition? I will show this condition in an image first. This image is showing you, the upper part of the image, it is showing you 
esophagus, this is esophagus and this is stomach. This lining is called as, this lining here is called as gastroesophageal junction. This lining is called as gastroesophageal junction and you can very clearly see the upper area, the upper area which is very smooth and the lower area which is very reddish in color. Now when you see the acid is coming back to the lower part of the esophagus. The esophagus here is getting chronically irritated because of which the esophagus has changed to this red color. This type of red color that is you see here now here it is basically because of the chronic irritation to the esophagus. So what happens? Now what happens is this area which usually had a squamous epithelium will now change to columnar. So what will do? Look, there are various ways to diagnose this. A GRD you will read in surgery is best seen or measured by the 24 hour pH monitoring. It is also diagnosed by doing esophagoscopy. So in the esophagus, you put this esophagoscope, it goes inside. So this when it comes to lower part of esophagus and this sees the esophagus, the lower part, suppose this is the lower part of esophagus, it sees that this part is actually getting inflamed. So when this part is getting inflamed, you take a biopsy from the lower part of esophagus. That means you take a biopsy from here. Adding BX as a short form of biopsy. Now look here. Look at the epithelium. You see here this part. This part of the epithelium has a flattened epithelial cells like this. And look at the very prominent appearing nucleus. So when you see epithelium like this with prominent nucleus, it is squamous epithelium. Okay, it is squamous epithelium. This is changing to epithelium which is looking like this. Again you look here. And where is the nucleus? All towards the base. They are all towards the base. So because the squamous epithelium has changed to columnar, the squamous has changed to columnar, what is it? It is basically a squamous changing to columnar is basically a columnar metaplasia. Okay, it is a columnar metaplasia. Now, when I move forward, look at this part. Look at the this part of the cell here and you see here. This, these are basically mucin containing cells. And what cells produce mucin? They are called as goblet cell. They are called as G O B L E T, goblet cells. Okay. So let, what we'll do is we'll just make this diagram separately in our notes, so it becomes very simplified during the form of revision. Okay. Let's move to the Barrett's esophagus biopsy finding. Now. Suppose I take a biopsy from lower part of esophagus. Look, whenever you draw a, any epithelium, one thing that you should all focus on is to make the base membrane. This is a base membrane. Okay, this is a base membrane. Now, in the base membrane, you will now find cells with prominent nucleus. Okay, they are flattened cells and they all have prominent nucleus. This is how the squamous epithelial cells normally look like. Squamous epithelial cell normally look like this. Above them, there are cells which are tall column-like cells like this. So These are basically now the changed cells which are now columnar epithelium. In between them, there is some cell with a unique shape like this. Column cells and some cell with a unique shape, something like this. But all the cells will have nucleus towards the base. You should all draw this in your notes. Look, this is, as I mentioned, it is a base membrane. It is a basement membrane. This is squamous epithelium. 
this columnar okay it is columnar epithelium this cell is goblet cell it's a goblet this cell is a goblet cell above the goblet cell here this area this is a mucin okay this part of goblet cell is a mucin So main function of the goblet cell is to produce mucin. Now can you tell me where is the usual goblet cell present? Normally, normally a goblet cell is present in the intestine. Remember this, okay? Normally it is present in the intestine. So whenever you find goblet cell, what does it show? That the esophagus epithelium has changed to intestinal type of epithelium. For this reason, goblet cell is the hallmark of goblet cell it is the hallmark of intestinal metaplasia it is the hallmark of intestinal metaplasia goblet is the hallmark of intestinal metaplasia remember this okay now the question is Look, how will you be sure that there is mucin only? How can we show that this is mucin only? To understand this only and only mucin, you should be able to utilize some stains. The mucin stains. The mucin stains. The mucin stains are, mucin stains, they are alcyon blue and muci carmine alcyon blue and the muci carmine so these two stains are in the mucin stain they ensure that the part which is looking like a mucin is actually a mucin it's actually a mucin okay so this is what i was showing you in the previous image i think that image you can better correlate now there's a basal brain lower down there is squamous epithelium the squamous is normal epithelium in the esophagus which has changed to which has changed to the next one which is columnar epithelium here so one has changed to this columnar epithelium and some cells here are the mucin containing goblet cells so because there is a goblet cell here you are ensure it's a type of intestinal metaplasia intestinal metaplasia Now this is another image, look, these are all the goblet cells, all of them are the goblet cells, G-O-B-L-E-T, do you know why are they called goblet cells, look at this one, it's a very beautiful, it's a beautiful looking goblet cell, so you know why it's called goblet cell, because when you look at the cell, the cell shape will remind you of something like this. This is a shape. This shape looks like a goblet. You know what is a goblet? Goblet is a wine drinking glass. Look, this will be looking like a wine drinking glass now. Because of this shape, it is called as goblet cell. And remember, it's a hallmark of intestinal metaplasia. So what will happen when there's a metaplasia? Why is it dangerous? Remember, when I was drawing this image in the previous one, look, when I was drawing this image, I was very particular in drawing the nucleus towards the base. You remember? Now, any metaplasia can progress to dysplasia. The moment it goes to dysplasia, this nucleus you see here, this will start going from the base to a bit of apex. It will go above. That means it will go away from the base. So, when it goes from the base away from the base, it is loss of polarity of the nucleus. This means the metaplasia is now going towards dysplasia. Sometimes it is also called as nuclear stratification that means the layering of the nucleus is not in the normal plane some is normally lower some is above some is more above nuclear stratification so what we can deduce from here is look any metaplasia metaplasia can progress to dysplasia dysplasia 
can progress to carcinoma in C2 and this can progress to a frank invasive carcinoma. This is the usual sequence. Remember, the carcinoma you can expect here, the carcinoma you can expect here is adenocarcinoma. You can expect here is adenocarcinoma. Thank you.